Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Thoughtful Solutions Podcast. I am your host, Matt. And I am your co-host, Chris. And these last few weeks have been pretty crazy. I've been working a lot. I've been on the night shift for the last two months or so, and it's been hard recently to find the time to record, but we are back at it. And I know you, Chris, you have just moved into your new apartment. Yeah, working a lot as well. I think about a month has gone by since I've had uh, my, my first day off tomorrow, so definitely has been hard to find the time to get some recording down. It's been a little been a little unfortunate. But we are back at it today, and today's episode is going to be talking about dedicating your life force to something. And it's going to be a very... Let's say relevant discussion, I think, is the right word. I think a lot of people in today's day and age are doing a lot of menial things that uh, is pretty caustic for the human condition and is really just a waste of time in the overall scheme of things, but we'll get into that. And as a preview as well for the next release... It's going to be the last episode in the Foundations playlist, and it will be on the Boogeyman fallacy and everything Ooh. that is related to that. But either way, let's go ahead and get into this discussion. So when talking about dedicating your life force to something, let's establish a baseline real quick. So essentially, life force in this context is meant to exemplify time. You know, we all have limited time that we are alive for. And I would believe we we already spend, you know, a third of that asleep. So it's really how you spend the 16 hours that are left within your day. And out of that, a lot of people end up spending that time going to work and working. And working in today's modern context can mean several different things, but I would say for the majority of people on the planet, so I'd say probably like 90-95%, work is typically something that you get relatively little enjoyment out of. Obviously for different people, it's going to be relative, it's going to be hard to pinpoint every anecdotal case, of course, but I would say for the majority of low-skilled service sector jobs to manual labor jobs to those who exist in developing and and third world countries, that would really encompass sort of the majority of the populace and would kind of fit into that ballpark. So, Really, after the dust settles and you go to sleep, you know, in in the Western side of things, you might work two jobs to put food on the table, or you might pull a lot of overtime, or you might be working extra hours or something like that. So really, how much time do you have to actually do what you're truly passionate about or something that could contribute to either the betterment of your community and or maybe on a larger scale as uh, to the world as a whole. Yeah, that's I actually, while you were saying that, I was just realizing we should clarify when we say meaningless jobs, that it, it's what you just said, meaningless as in it doesn't contribute to like the community or, or to your own self betterment in a whole, not like, oh, you know, if you're, uh, uh, a barista at Starbucks, like you're meaningless. We don't mean, kind of mean this in a mean way. I th- think we should probably point that out. It's a, a meaningless as in it isn't. It isn't fulfilling you. It isn't yeah using your time wisely to something that's actually gonna make your your life you know progress in a better way. Things of uh, of that nature. Yeah, and similar to the episode we did on the new human rights movement, you could also consider it jobs that could be easily automated or done in a more efficient manner. And again, to sort of quantify that, it could be, as you pointed out, like some sort of service sector job, like a barista, cook, etc. 
someone yeah, who works like a, in manual labor. Cart, yeah. Uh, a grocery cart uh, guy, you know, a little, little kid or something like that that could be easily automated. Or, you know, freaking uh, certain traffic directed type people in those jobs. And like you said, ditch diggers that could be done with machines that are, you know, probably just even things where you don't need a new machine. You just need to maybe change how we do it as a whole. And yeah, boom, you'd probably free up some jobs. Cashiers, roofers, you know, all just yep. just all that kind of stuff. Or even in a different context, if you do live in a developing slash third world country or something like that, maybe you spend the majority of your day farming or doing animal husbandry or something like that, where you are essentially doing subsistence living, or you are selling your your produce in order to make ends meet. So it's it's very much that's sort of the context, which on a global scale that does apply to the majority of, of people on the planet. But we could also expand it to other spheres. You could look at a lot of financier slash type jobs like a, like accounting or somebody who works at like a call center or something is someone who might work on wall street you know financial financial type crap that really really is in its own sort of sphere with with what those jobs entail it's it's not something that actually produces something it's just somebody who is either helping move money around moves money around or deals with the paperwork behind monetary transactions or some type of service transaction or or something like that you know i would i would consider that as well like a quote-unquote meaningless job yeah it's a 100 percent in the system type of job that's only for the benefit of of like the, the the actual social system that you're in capitalism for in this case of course here in america but yeah this has nothing to do with actually helping your community out no, for sure. And I think where the potential gets lost is, as as I'd mentioned before, a lot of people, again, the, the majority, are spending a relatively large amount of their life doing something that is totally absent from from what they're truly passionate about. And then by the time you reach retirement age, if you can even retire if you're lucky, if you live in sort of the Western context, then you've probably been drained enough to that point where any more grandiose projects or something that you've been passionate about might have really taken the back seat until you've reached that point. And then yeah. then you're low on energy too. Yeah, you're low on energy, you're what, like sixty five at that point, which, you know, again, that you're you're not down and out by any means. But imagine what you could have done if you could have pursued whatever end you were passionate about for the last 30 years as well, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, without the need for it to be your source of income as well. You know, that could be just a good perspective to take about the system right now, because they've already said, you hear all the time, you know, you need to take what you enjoy doing in life, whatever your passion is, and then make that how you make a living. And it's like, well, actually, maybe you should be able to not have to make such a, a dependent financial living to where you, you now are forced to use your passion as your source of income. You know, you could you could actually just enjoy a, a passion that you have, you know, even if it's kind of like a side thing as, as opposed to a job. But still, instead of having it to, to force money into it all the time. Yeah, and when money really soaks into something it can take out a lot of the creative processes and it sort of drowns out the the main motive for creative effort because it that that becomes the main driver of of what something might occur you know if if you're not making money doing doing that certain thing in our sort of current paradigm mm -hmm. context then it's it's not considered viable so it doesn't matter if it's something you're passionate about. If you're doing it to a degree where you can't make a living off of it, then from a systems perspective, it is considered pointless. Yeah, yeah, especially when you are so 
in need of cash money in this system. Yeah. You know, you could even take examples like if, if somebody is passionate about doing volunteer work and helping in their local community, mm. it's like you really do that when you are available to. It's not something that you could, you know, if, if you as a community organizer or something or somebody who just, just helps out these, these larger efforts, it's not considered valuable from the this current yeah. systems perspective like clearly anyone can see that like yes it's it's valuable on a human basis and helping out those in need is a very altruistic and awesome thing to do but you're not making money so what is mm -hmm. the validity from the system's perspective and what you're doing and unfortunately the system indicates that there is none because the way that the system values where human life force is is input is very much skewed in one direction. Yeah, towards the financial sector. Yeah, towards the financial side of things. And yeah. to to even point something out as well, those sort of at, at the top who have won the game, they are the ones who have the most time to pursue what they might feel like is a positive endeavor, whether, whether, again, it's for their community or for the species as a whole. But unfortunately, due to system incentives and how they've gotten to that place uh, to begin with, they are the ones who have the least incentive overall to actually use that time and the resources that they have to try and better the system overall. Because, again, they've mm -hmm. been incentivized and they've come to where they've they've gotten because of the system and how it functions in its current state so those who have the most capacity to change things and really move things along uh, as an overall progression of our species unfortunately are the ones who are most incentivized not to actually change how things function yeah yeah that's pretty rough and that's why i think sort of starting from the ground up and allowing those who are the majority of the species, obviously, to really have a freed up existence, there's just a lot of potential that is there once the sort of zeitgeist socioeconomic shift uh, begins to occur. And it's also good to make the point that there's just so much potential, man. There's just being wasted. Like, imagine all of the potential Einsteins that are out there that are unfortunately due to life circumstances or inability and access to resources are unable to pursue their passions in something that they, that they might be talented with. And it's it's just... It's it's very much tragic to see where things could go and how much potential is being lost due to the stifling nature of how things work now. Right? Like, the system is actually so set up to not let you achieve these type of things. There's the people who were surgeons and doctors at other countries around the world at their level, but they've traveled here to America, and because of some qualification rule that is created or just only here in America that person is technically not a surgeon or a doctor therefore they're doing something like driving a cab they talk about potential Einsteins that are wasted there is a literal Einsteins that just came here for a, a better system for their life and then and then boom the system itself was like no you're not good enough uh, you know let's go to get a different job yeah, and, and one thing others might say who are sort of more beholden to the system, they might say, well, if if you really are passionate about doing something, you you should get off your ass and, and go to school and, and get in debt so that you can get a degree to go be able to do something that, that you're you're really passionate about or whatever. And for a handful of people, yeah, that, that might work out. You might be lucky to land a job outside of school, and the debt won't be crippling enough to where it 
offsets the opportunity of what you've gotten. But I would say for the majority of people, unfortunately, due to how the system is designed, that is out of arm's reach. And even in that context, it really only applies to, again, sort of the Western uh, s sort of civilization that, that exists. And even then, again, only a small majority or a s small minority of, of people in that context are able to even uh, go out and achieve that. And a lot of people will attempt to do something in that vein as well and will fail. So even if you try, it's you, you still might fall flat and end up having to take that barista job and work another one just to pay the bills, even though you have this bachelor or master's degree in, in some field that you're passionate about that you are unable to do anything with. It's pretty rough. So, you know, when you're talking about dedicating your life force to something, like the reality these days is more so like you got to look at what's your life force is already being dedicated to and what's 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 your time is being devoted to you know and maybe you can make small adjustments once you see where it could be better and i think where a lot of the shift occurs is once the current paradigm really shifts and capitalism starts to fall by the wayside because as we've pointed out before it's very much an antiquated technology in terms of a socioeconomic system and from a systems perspective if the shift occurs towards something like a natural law resource-based economy for an example which is an episode that we'll we'll get into the uh, in the future as well you begin to see the the freeing up of human potential because a lot of the basic necessities that somebody needs to survive housing electricity internet food water all that kind of stuff is already baked into how the system functions and a lot of people realize that we have the potential to clothe house feed you know, provide water for for everybody on the planet like multiple times over but it's just a severe misallocation of resources and how the system functions. And if, if that is something that is shored up, then everything else sort of falls into place and it allows people to be freed up with, with what could be considered a work week. And it allows people to really start to pursue a lot of these ends that we're, we're mentioning. Um, I, I think that's where sort of the crux of this discussion comes to is it's very much a realization that once this, the system shift occurs and once we get to that point, there is going to be a much more exponential degree of potential that is unlocked compared to how things are. And unfortunately, the longer that we do stagnate in this current state, um, it's just going to be longer and longer that that potential just sits there ready to be unlocked. So it's, it's very much the Otis on galvanizing this kind of change. And as we mentioned before, that's, that's why we're doing this podcast to point out things like this and, uh, to really bring to the light that change on this type of scale begins with you as an individual and realizing that things can definitely be different. And all it takes is talking to those that you're close to and sort of realizing that, hey, things could be better. And there are other potentials that humanity has not even explored yet that involve the most relevant systems that influence our lives, which is the socioeconomic system. Mm -hmm. And once that begins to change and people realize that that is the main orienter of their daily life, you could really start to see a sort of a chain reaction as, as your everyday person begins to realize this. And I think that really, that, that really shows how it's very much a revolution in thought that really sparks something like this. And unfortunately, because of what we're talking about in this episode, where people are spending 
their their life force, which essentially is like a resource, in doing stuff just to literally put food on the table and survive, it's hard for a lot of people to really think out of the context of, you know, why why am I doing this? Why is everything like this? And to really take in sort of a larger system thought approach as opposed to just trying to survive on a daily basis. So that's why we're out here to spread the word. So, you know, you just have to be, you want, it's almost this type of stuff. Once you're told about it for the first time, you almost have that slight conflicting moment of like, is, can that, can that, is that true? Could that possibly work? And then you start thinking about it more and it's like, yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. It's like the only reason things exist in their current state is because of what people have been conditioned into for x number of years and the only barrier to this sort of of greater change is humanity itself is is the species itself and all it takes is galvanization to make things change and we've seen that occur in smaller pockets for uh, different causes but i think this is really going to be the big the big uh, equalizer and the big change within our our lifetimes chris is is seeing this sort of larger thought evolution take shape and to see people realize that the old way of doing things is not working Things are failing. The planet is dying. The human species is wasting so much time and potential that there is is so much more to things that we just don't take into account. I'd love of, to see that in a lifetime. I hope we get to. I mean, it's it's definitely going to come to a head because there, you know, as as we've mentioned in previous episodes, there are a lot of of tipping points that are going to be occurring. Uh, within the next 30, 50 years. And it's uh, it's going to be very much a larger imperative to see things change. And if if it doesn't, well, we'll, uh, we'll see what the falling out is going to look like. But <laughs> I always tend to lean more on the positive side. And I think, yeah. I think there is definitely going to be a realization at a certain point that things don't need to stay the same and all it takes again is that thought revolution well put well put sir just that realization so when you consider from your perspective chris what you are dedicating your life force to do you feel like if you weren't working your Nine to five in the pool industry, uh, do you feel like there would be a lot more passionable things that you could pursue? And how, how do you feel like that would sort of uh, benefit you if, if that reality came to be? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah, and it's not like, you know, I tried to still pursue my passions the most I can while at work, you know, like studying YouTube videos and shit like that about things that I do on my side passions, but dude, we're talking up to 50 hours a week of time devoted to a job to make the income and and that would be, you know, swapped with the, the if it was like open time, just, you know, pick and choose. You know, that's almost like a, you know, idealist, not idealist, utopian. That's almost like utopian type mindset or, or opportunity to have where you get 100% of your day, every day, you could devote to something that you just actually want to go do that day. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I, I think that that's a good point as well, is this is not sort of a, a utopian thought process, but even if you see like an 80% reduction in in what you could consider a work week or like a 50% reduction right. as, as things sort of slide 
to a greater shift and there's more incremental change even yep. that would be a profound realization, you know, if, if we had like a 20 hour work week or like a 10 hour work week or something like that, or your community, your community only needs you to work, you know, like again, like 10 or 15 hours a week doing something that, you know, contributing to food resources or electricity or, or you know, something like that. Like even that would be a profound shift in, in human potential. Yeah, yeah, you know, not to, I get the the question originally might be a little bit exaggerative and extreme, but, but I, yeah, exactly, I see what you mean. A small change could still make a big difference, in, in you know what you what you're actually doing with your energy. Yeah, and that's again, if if we even saw like a fifty percent reduction, that's still like. 50% more than was available before and that is twice the potential that existed before or 50 mm -hmm. times or some shit like that or whatever because before it was like almost zero for most people so I would say even a small shift like that would have pronounced impacts Yeah, on, yeah, on a discussion like this so, yeah, I mean, I would say that's, that's again, sort of the crux of this discussion, uh, and we'll, we'll sort of wrap it up around here. Um, it's, again, very much showing that a lot of the things that people are doing these days, and we're talking just the, the majority of the human population, your average person, unfortunately locks you into spending a lot of your waking hours doing something that you potentially don't find any meaning in and that really doesn't contribute to overall societal and species progression compared to what either your passion might be or even just towards your own like mental health and your ability to do something that again you you could really unlock your potential doing and whether or not there is inherent value or not in what that action might be, the current system values everything in such a skewed way that somebody helping out their community or something will really be essentially have, have no value in today's paradigm because, again, the value system of, of free market capitalism is very much skewed towards something that really isn't referent to to human advancement it's literally just mm -hmm. to make money <laughs> yeah which has no referent on 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 progress as a whole all for one yeah and again just showing that if if a lot you know the millions and millions of people that exist that could have this time freed up just imagine what what could be done and and i think that is going to be the point to leave off on is just just imagine what could be and again with all that potential just picture what you would do and expand that to those you know those you love and even those who you don't know who might have aptitude for things that you can't even think about or the ideas that have been floating around with them for their entire life just what what are the possibilities what are the possibilities? So, but yeah, that'll be it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you next time for the episode on the boogeyman fallacy. Have a good one.